the heart of Iowa's sprawling countryside lies the quaint town of Willow Creek, a place where the days unfold in a gentle rhythm beneath the golden sun. John had come seeking solace in the simplicity of small town life, and the farmhouse on the outskirts of town seemed like the perfect retreat. Nestled amidst fields of swaying cornstalks, the farmhouse stood weathered and proud, its paint peeling and windows reflecting the fading light of dusk. As John unpacked his meager belongings, he couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over him like a heavy shroud. The farmhouse, with its creaking floorboards and whispering winds, seemed to hold secrets in its worn walls. Shadows danced in the corners of John's vision, and the rustling of the cornfields outside sent shivers down his spine. From his bedroom window, John could see the vast expanse of farmland stretching out before him, rows of corn standing tall and imposing. Among the stalks, a few scarecrows stood sentry, their tattered forms swaying in the evening breeze. Their empty eyes seemed to follow his every move, their straw-stuffed bodies frozen in eerie poses. John felt a chill crawl up his spine as he watched them, but he dismissed it as an overactive imagination. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the farmhouse in a warm golden glow, John retired to bed, but sleep was elusive. His mind filled with thoughts of the strange scarecrows and the unsettling feeling that he was not alone in the farmhouse. Throughout the night, strange sounds echoed through the old house, a soft whispering in the walls, a distant scraping like claws against wood. Each noise sent a jolt of fear through John's heart, and he lay awake, listening to the symphony of the night. Morning brought no relief from the sense of unease that gripped John like a vice. As he made his way to the kitchen, his eyes fell upon a sight that made his blood run cold. Pinned to the front door with a rusted nail was a tattered piece of paper, stained dark with what looked like blood. Trembling, John reached out and took the note, his hands shaking as he unfolded it. The words were scrawled in a shaky hand, the letters twisted and jagged. Leave this house or face the consequences. A chill swept through John's body as he read the ominous message. Who had left it and why? Fear clenched at his throat, but he pushed it aside, telling himself it was just a prank. But deep down, he couldn't shake the feeling that something dark and malevolent lurked within the farmhouse walls. And as the sun set on Willow Creek, casting long shadows across the cornfields, John couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. Despite the chilling warning on the note, John resolved to stay in the farmhouse. Where else could he go? The small town of Willow Creek offered no other lodging, and he couldn't afford to leave. As the days passed, the farmhouse seemed to come alive with unseen forces. Shadows danced in the corners of John's vision, and the air hummed with an eerie energy. But he tried to convince himself it was just his imagination, a trick of the mind in the unfamiliar surroundings. One evening, as John sat in the dimly lit living room, a soft whispering filled the air. At first, he thought it was the wind rustling through the cornfields outside. But as the whispering grew louder, he realized it was coming from within the farmhouse itself. The sound seemed to emanate from the walls, a ghostly chorus of voices speaking in hushed tones. John strained to make out the words, but they were unintelligible, a jumbled cacophony of whispers and murmurs. Fear prickled at the back of John's neck as he listened, his heart pounding in his chest. He tried to ignore the haunting whispers, to convince himself it was just his mind playing tricks on him. But then came the footsteps. Late one night, as John lay in bed, the floorboards outside his room creaked with the weight of unseen footsteps. Slow and deliberate, they approached his door, sending a wave of icy dread through him. Frozen in terror, John watched as the door knob turned slowly, the door creaking open on sealant hingis. A chill wind swept through the room, carrying with it the scent of decay and earth. And there, framed in the doorway, stood a figure shrouded in darkness. Its form was indistinct, a shadowy silhouette against the moonlit night. Heart pounding in his chest, John watched in horror as the figure moved closer, its footsteps echoing like thunder in the silent room. It seemed to glide across the floor, its movements smooth and unnatural. A voice, cold and hollow, filled the air, speaking words that sent a shiver down John's spine. Leave this house, it whispered, the words dripping with malice. Leave, 
or face the consequences. With a surge of terror, John leaped from his bed and bolted for the door. But as he reached for the handle, a cold hand closed around his wrist, icy fingers digging into his flesh. Panic consumed him as he struggled against the unseen force, his mind reeling with fear. With a final desperate cry, he wrenched himself free and stumbled into the hallway, heart pounding in his chest. But the figure was gone, vanished into the darkness like a wisp of smoke. John stood alone in the silent hallway, the only sound the pounding of his own heartbeat. Trembling with fear, he knew then that the farmhouse was not empty, it was alive with malevolent forces forces that wanted him gone, and as the night stretched on, filled with whispers and phantom footsteps, John realized he was not alone in the farmhouse. Something dark and sinister lurked within its walls, something that wanted him dead. The haunting whispers and phantom footsteps continued to torment John night after night, each evening filled with dread and fear. Sleep became a distant memory as he lay awake, listening to the eerie sounds that seemed to echo through the farmhouse. One morning, after yet another sleepless night, John stumbled into the kitchen to make himself a cup of coffee. As he reached for the coffee pot, his eyes fell upon a sight that made his blood run cold. On the kitchen table, bathed in the soft morning light, lay a crumpled piece of paper. It was the same tattered note he had found pinned to the front door, but now it seemed even more menacing. The words were written in a jagged, uneven scrawl, the letters seeming to pulse with dark energy leave this house or face the consequences. John's hands trembled as he picked up the note, the paper feeling cold and clammy in his grasp. Fear gripped his heart as he realized that whatever lurked within the farmhouse wanted him gone. But where could he go? Willow Creek offered no refuge, and the thought of leaving the safety of the farmhouse filled him with dread. Determined to uncover the truth, John set out to explore the surrounding farmland. The cornfield stretched out before him, the stalks swaying gently in the breeze. But as he walked among the rows of corn, a sense of unease settled over him. It was then that he noticed them. Among the golden stalks stood the scarecrows, their ragged forms seeming to leer at him with malevolent intent. John's blood ran cold as he realized that these were not ordinary scarecrows. Their straw-filled bodies seemed to twitch and sway, their empty eyes following his every move. And then, in the distance, he heard it. A soft, eerie whispering filled the air, the sound seeming to come from the scarecrows themselves. John's heart raced as he realized that they were alive, animated by some unseen force. With a sense of mounting dread, John turned and ran back to the farmhouse, the whispering, following him like a sinister shadow. He slammed the door shut behind him, his breath coming in ragged gasps, but the scarecrows were not done with him yet. That night, as John lay in bed, the farmhouse was filled with the sound of scraping and scratching. He could hear the scarecrows moving outside, their straw-filled bodies shuffling across the ground. And then, a soft thud against the bedroom window made John's blood run cold. With trembling hands, he pulled back the curtains and peered outside. There, in the pale moonlight, he saw them. The scarecrows stood outside, their twisted forms illuminated by the silver glow of the moon. Their eyes glowed with an unholy light as they stared up at him, their mouths twisted into grotesque smiles. And then, with a sudden lurch, they began to move. With jerky, unnatural movements, the scarecrows started to climb the walls of the farmhouse, their straw-filled limbs scraping against the wood. John watched in horror as they approached the window, their hollow eyes fixed on him with malicious intent. With a cry of terror, John backed away from the window, his heart pounding in his chest. The farmhouse seemed to shake with the force of their approach, the air thick with the stench of decay. And then, with a sickening crash, the window shattered into a thousand pieces, the scarecrows pouring into the room like a tide of darkness. With nowhere left to run, John screamed as the scarecrows descended upon him, their twisted forms wielding rusted farm tools with deadly intent. In the darkness of the farmhouse, John's screams were swallowed by the night, his blood mingling with the straw of the scarecrows as they tore him apart with savage fury. And so, in the small town of Willow Creek, the farmhouse stood silent and empty, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked within its walls.
the scarecrows return to their posts in the cornfields, their silent vigil, a warning to all who dared to enter the farmhouse in the dead of night. <laughs>